Thanks, John, and it's, uh, it's great to be in uh, Naples, although I was expecting warmer than, and, and I think probably all of you were as well. Uh, uh, Joanne called me from Seattle and said that it was uh, high 60s there. I said, well, it's uh, in the 50s here at, at, uh, at night, but uh, we still have a lot of nice uh, sun, so it's uh, great to all be together for the club. And uh, Mark had asked me to give kind of a state of the STS, an update on the STS, so I thought I'd give a little bit of background. Good news is, uh, or bad news, depending on how you look at it, I don't have any disclosures. And uh, many of you are aware that this is the 50th anniversary year of the STS, and so this is the organization, the committee uh, organizing the STS in 1963 and uh, the organization uh, first officers and meeting uh, in 1964. So uh, in January of next year, and you'll see this at the end of my presentation, is the 50th anniversary meeting. So we certainly hope that you will all, uh, all be there for that. So the STS uh, started in uh, 1964, and it was born of a revolution a little bit like the club. So the STS was started because it was felt that there was needed to be a home for the whole world of cardiothoracic surgery, not just the elite academic cardiothoracic surgeons. And uh, a, a group of individuals uh, developed and, and planned the STS to really be an inclusive organization that represents the, the whole specialty of cardiothoracic surgery. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more uh, later in terms of how how valuable and how strong I think that it is that we are allied as especially that that is that cardiac and thoracic and congenital surgeons are together. It, certainly contrasting that with experiences that we all uh, that I know certainly and many of you know with our European and other colleagues uh, I think makes us much stronger. And that's the way the club started as well. The club started uh, 26 years ago and started out of a revolution of saying the our professional organizations are not rep representing general thoracic surgery in our scientific meetings well enough. We ought to have a meeting where uh, we, we can uh, get together, present our own scientific publications uh, and information, uh, and really the roots are similar to that of the STS. And one of the things that the STS has, has prided itself on for now decades is this a tradition of accountability for quality, which started with the peer review program in the 70s, but then has morphed into the, the databases that started in 1989 and are really a very powerful quality metric as well as an uh, engine and tool for the STS and our members. Most of you will recognize, at least vaguely, that the STS uh, for the first uh, uh, almost 40 years was managed by Professional Management Corporation. And in 2002, we went through a major reorganization which led to self-management that started in June of 2002, which has also been a major part of the STS's success, which is starts to be represented here when I give you just a few stats about the STS. Now 6,700 members, includes approximately 80% of cardiothoracic surgeons in the United States. About 20% of our membership are from outside of the United States and Canada, and it represents 85 countries uh, have members in the STS. Uh, the STS also now has Categories for residents, medical students, allied health. Uh, many of you have your nurse practitioners or perfusionists or administrators as members of the SDS. And now other physicians, physicians that uh, partner with us, pulmonologists, uh, uh, cardiothoracic anesthesiologists, cardiologists are all uh, eligible for membership uh, in the STS. And Dan Sturman, we want uh, to see your membership application uh, uh, right after this meeting. And you can see how the STS has evolved since uh, self-governance now uh, uh, just 11 years ago. We went from nine and a half staff uh, in 2002 to now 56 staff, uh, most of which are in Chicago and uh, three of which are in our Washington office, <laughs> and we now have an annual budget of a, approximately $20 million. 
The Chicago office has expanded to have all of the 23rd uh, floor of uh, the American Board of Surgery building in Chicago. Uh, the American Board of Thoracic Surgery is uh, uh, subleases and is partnered with the next door to the STS. And of course, the Annals Editorial Office is in Philadelphia, uh, led by Hank Edmonds. Um, but the STS has also become, uh, for many, the, the home of cardiothoracic surgery with uh, a, an additional aspect of the STS, which is in association management of other smaller organizations within cardiothoracic surgery, organizations that are very important to our specialty, uh, but aren't large enough to self-manage. And uh, uh, these are the Southern uh, Women in Thoracic Surgery, the Joint Council, uh, uh, and, and now including the Foundation and CTSNet, for example, uh, all organizations that are managed out of the STS office. What's very important is to recognize these organizations are completely independent. They have their own boards. They have their, their uh, own uh, staff and direction, but they are managed by the STS like the STS used to be managed by a professional management corporation before we were self-managed. And this is the organizational chart. Uh, you, you don't need to commit this to memory, but it gives you an idea of the scope of what's going on at the STS with the board of directors uh, being responsible uh, and overseeing uh, and delegating to the executive committee uh, many of the day-to-day the -day and month-to-month -month decisions, uh, finance committee, nominating committee, et cetera, that are, are par parallel, but then three councils, uh, education and member services, a very big council with a lot of activity, the Council on Quality Research and Patient Safety, which is where the database uh, is housed, as well as our, our research development, and the Council on Health Policy and Relationships, which uh, uh, relates to our advocacy efforts and relationships uh, with government. And when we look at our uh, volunteer leadership, and many of you are within this volunteer leadership, if we look at just this past year, we had approximately 500 nominees uh, for leadership appointments in 2013. 131 of them are involved uh, uh, self-nominees in the new self-nomination process, and we have now 289 volunteer positions within these workforces and committees and about 50 to 60 positions open per year. So you can see that uh, um, there, there's good turnover, uh, there's a rich uh, environment of volunteer individuals who are interested and have skills that are very important uh, for the successful running of the STS. In terms of the membership, um, uh, Canadian membership has been very important there. Uh, uh, equally important to the U.S. members, and uh, it's been an initiative of ours. Uh, the candidate and pre-candidate members, which are the residents and medical students, uh, allied physicians is a, a newer area where we really want to encourage cardiologists, pulmonologists, gastroenterologists that partner with cardiothoracic surgeons to be members. And I'll point out the international involvement. That's been something that I've certainly been interested in. When I was secretary of the STS, we developed reciprocal arrangements with the European Association of Cardiothoracic Surgery as well as the European Society of Thoracic Surgeons uh, in, in uh, having reciprocal relationships in membership, making it easier to become a member of each other's organization. And we're really increasing our relationship with the Asian society and looking for increased relationships in the other continents where there's not as much uh, uh, international involvement yet, but in Latin America, Africa, and uh, Australasia. This is what most of you are most familiar with, obviously, are the educational aspect uh, of the STS. The annual meeting is the highlight of that with TechCon, with the STS University, with the General Thoracic and Congenital Symposia. We now, those are now online programs and many of you utilize that for CME. Uh, and I encourage you, if you're not able to make it to the meeting, it's a way of getting the CME from the meeting and seeing the content of the meeting. Uh, but it's, 
it's very important uh, in terms of staying up to date and increasing the scope of practice that we do, the things like the uh, TAVR program and VAD programs for uh, educating uh, cardiothoracic surgeons to new technology. Uh, along that line, interventional bronchoscopy course for general thoracic surgeons partnered with the American College of Chest Physicians. And we, we've now developed e-learning modules, which is probably an area that will be growing substantially over the next uh, few years. And one of them partnered with the American Board of Thoracic Surgery. Uh, Bill Baumgartner is going to be talking about maintenance of certification. And there's patient safety uh, module that has been developed in partnership with the board uh, to help accommodate uh, uh, our, all of our needs for maintenance of certification. The clinical partnerships that we have just keep growing, and these are rich uh, relationships that we have with other specialty societies that relate to education uh, predominantly, as well as uh, co-led programs. Uh, certainly, the American College of Cardiology, where Rob Wimbrandt and I are going from here uh, to, for a leadership meeting with them, is a, a close clinical partner with the STS, as well as some of our uh, European colleagues, both at EX as well as ESTS, and uh, increasingly the cardiovascular anesthesiologist uh, and the Society for Vascular Surgery. But as I pointed out at the beginning, what we're, one of the things we're really known for is emphasizing quality, and that is all about the database. Uh, and the database is an example of where we general thoracic surgeons, I think, benefit enormously from our close alliance and partnership with cardiac surgeons in the United States. Having just come off the Council of the European Association and seeing how things work in Europe makes me very much appreciate how closely linked we are as a specialty in the United States. And a data, the database is an example of where cardiac surgeons uh, for a variety of reasons, are under different pressures than we are. They're under a microscope for outcomes that we are starting to become under, but that led to an interest and in development of database that we get to benefit from that experience and from that, from that background. STS public reporting is, is now gone forward with some cardiac measures, cabbage, aortic valve, and combined aortic valve cabbage, and this will likely come forward for general thoracic surgery as well. So we get to have the experience of our cardiac colleagues before we uh, put our own toe in the water for these more controversial, but the future areas of uh, things like public reporting and risk calculators. Uh, I'm gonna get to guideline development uh, in a minute, but just to give you database by the numbers, uh, we have over 1,400 database participants, uh, uh, over 1,000 in adult cardiac, and that's greater than 90% of the cardiac surgery programs in the United States. And uh, due to a lot of effort, including by the members of the club, a growing and now robust involvement of uh, general thoracic surgeons in the general thoracic database, 230 sites representing 800 uh, surgeons involved in the general thoracic database. And you can see also the congenital, and the database is now going international with uh, four different countries that have uh, programs now in our database uh, relating to cardiac surgery. And a, a successful aspect of the database is, uh, is audit and being able to assure accuracy. And in the cardiac surgery, we have 95% accuracy of the data and are increasing the level of audit to increase transparency as well as the credibility of our data to uh, the government and to payers. The database partnerships that we have are also legion. The database is such a powerful part of what we do. Uh, the Duke Clinical Research Institute is our data warehouse and, and partner for data analysis, but we now have partnerships with uh, CMS, with the National Quality Forum. We have a, a, a relatively new but very important partnership with Consumer Reports. And when we were just uh, in Washington, D.C. at a press conference uh, about two weeks ago, 
the Consumer Reports CEO was there and sought, uh, sought me out to talk with me about how much he appreciated the STS involvement in public reporting with Consumer Reports and cardiac surgery. So there's a, a wide a variety of institutions and uh, entities that are partners with us in database. When we look at policy, a lot of policy in, in the clinical arena go, revolves around guidelines. We have uh, moderating the session John Mitchell, who's uh, chair of the Workforce on Evidence-Based uh, Guidelines for the STS and has led a lot of this effort. I have put up what some of the existing guidelines are and in yellow what some of the guidelines are in development. But we also have clinical statements, for example, a recently de developed clinical statement on lung cancer screening. And we're working on influencing national policy by nominating members to the U.S. Uh, Preventive Services Task Force that is looking at uh, recommendations for lung cancer screening. And we've been very involved regionally as well, most recently with the California Technology Assessment Forum uh, presenting information and, and uh, flying people there to testify about implementation of, of technology, cabbage versus PCI, PCI TAVR, et cetera. Now, we've uh, recently developed a research center, and this came out of the uh, most recent strategic planning of the STS, led by Doug Matheson when he was president of the STS. And out of the strategic planning was a goal to develop research. Uh, and within that is the plan to develop a formal research center, which was put together with a business plan in July of 2011 and has now been formalized and is a rich uh, environment that has a goal of acquiring funded research grants, facilitating generation of grant proposals, managing existing grants, and establishing an independent infrastructure for independent research. And, and obviously a lot of this is geared around the database, but it's not exclusive to the database. And there is already a lot of recognition of the STS, our database, as well as our research efforts by a number of quality groups. Uh, and STS is seen uh, as a leader in quality, uh, and our specialty is seen as a leader in quality because of how we've uh, developed our clinical databases and how we've used them credibly and responsibly. An example of this is uh, the development of a national coverage decision for percutaneous valves. And this has then led to a development of a registry partnered with the ACC that the STS a ACC has developed a transcatheter valve therapy registry that is a requirement of uh, all uh, percutaneous valves being placed. So this gets us to then the government relations and one of the things I want to point out is uh, here is uh, some areas that are maybe not as flashy yet may in impact people more than anything else and that gets into the RUC how, uh, and CPT. Those are things on how we're paid. And if we look at political advocacy by the STS and we look at the payment projections over a 10-year period from when things started to be restricted. You can see that um, payments were cut ex extremely in the early uh, to mid-1990s and that corrective action by STS members and STS efforts uh, decreased the amount of uh, diminished reimbursement that our whole specialty was under with an impact of about $1.5 billion of compensation to cardiothoracic surgeons over a 10-year period. So a really incredible impact, and this is behind the scenes. This is stuff I think that most of us don't recognize. But along those lines are the national coverage decision that I mentioned for TAVR, um, but related to general thoracic, the National Defense Authorization Act had within it uh, due in large part to our influence, a framework of management of recalcitrant ca cancers in which lung cancer is included. 
So just a couple of projects that the SDS is a partner with. The many of you are familiar with the American College of Surgeons Commission on Cancer Proven Care Lung Cancer uh, Project. And this relates to something we're all familiar with, patterns of care in lung cancer and uh, inadequate uh, uh, care in many places and uh, increased variability of care. This has led to a project, initially these six sites, that is now increased to 12 sites around the United States for hardwiring processes of care for lung cancer patients. And when we look at compliance of these 38 measures of lung cancer care, you can see it increasing from 40% at the outset to 90% uh, uh, several months later from uh, these efforts to improve processes and quality of care in lung cancer. But we're also involved uh, in the Choosing Wisely campaign that many of you may know a, lot, a little bit about where the uh, American Board of Internal Medicine Foundation has led an effort to improve communication with patients and to identify areas that do not need to be done. The STS uh, has partnered with several other organizations and uh, uh, Choosing Wisely has been a major impact in the media and has uh, been an area that the, the press, the AARP, the Consumer Reports are partners with. And the Society of Thoracic Surgeons uh, partnered with uh, these other organizations in the second phase of Choosing Wisely and uh, we're part of a press release in Washington, D.C. just two weeks ago and this paper coming out in the annals uh, this coming, this month, uh, goes through the details of choosing wisely, so it's a good reference for you to have on what we're doing as a specialty to improve our partnership with patients. So the future of the STS and of our specialty is really continued independence. Uh, uh, potentials for independence are in-house warehousing of our data, uh, uh, in-house biostatistician, and continuing to be the home of cardiothoracic surgery, uh, being a place where the specialty can be as cohesive as possible. Uh, we'll continue to partner with government agencies as we've been doing, uh, national coverage decisions, new technology credentialing, and increase collaboration with our specialty societies, uh, uh, allied specialty societies as we're doing. The research engine that I uh, mentioned will develop as a, a robust tool for cardiothoracic surgeons and we can, will continue to be a leader in quality and new technology with the database, with the development of things like the TVT registry uh, and, and now post-market surveillance and with the bigger ideas of a mega specialty meeting where we work together with other allied specialty societies to have a, a giant meeting of cardiothoracic surgeons, pulmonologists, cardiologists, uh, a little bit like Digestive Disease Week for, for general surgery and, and GI tumors. So that's uh, my view of uh, the STS as it is, as it is now. Uh, and going into our 50th year, I encourage all of you to join us in Orlando, January 25th to 29th, 2014. Thank you.